Congrats, man. Like you said at the beginning, you were fighting these guys, like your third fight, you're fighting in the top 10, and you said that you maybe felt like your growth. Do you think, do you wish you would have maybe slow played it a little bit more so you could have grown in the sport a little bit more? Yeah, you got to understand that when I got in the UFC, I was like training out of my garage. You know what I mean? Like we had just opened up a gym, a Michigan top team. Like we were babies. We had no fucking idea what we were doing. You know what I mean? Like, I, Darren, and, Darren Crookshank and I used to get ready for his UFC fights. Like, he's fighting Jorge Masvidal. We're in a fucking, we're in a garage with a wood heater in the middle of winter training. He's going to fight Jorge Masvidal. You know what I mean? Like, the way I came up is, like, the, you know, people in the jungle in Brazil. Like, we, we had no idea what the hell we were doing. You know what I mean? And it took a long time. You know what I mean? Like, you're, you're going against these people that are training in legit gyms with legit coaches. They know the routine. They know all the things. And we're just hillbillies in our backyard, you know, trying to figure it out. I mean, we had great coaches, thank God, but, but we really didn't, we didn't have the instruction. I, we, didn't know the, we didn't know the game the way I know it now, you know what I mean? Moving to Las Vegas, I mean, I've sacrificed my whole life for this shit, you know, and I, I'm, I'm owed. I'm owed everything, and I, this is how I feel. Do you think, even though, you know, like you said, you wanted, wish you could have slow played it, but some of those losses and some of those fights, you learned a lot about yourself, I imagine, as oh. well. Do you think that's what has enabled you? Because right now, watching you out there fight tonight, it looked like a brand new you. It looked yeah. like you were fighting different than I've seen you fight in years, it felt. Yeah, I mean, I think the, what the biggest thing for me is, like, the, the regret, you know? Like, one fight that stands out more than any is Marab. I know I can beat that motherfucker. You know what I mean? Like I was, I, I was, I was hot. Everything was perfect. I was gonna whoop him, and I went out there and I was just flat. And I fought emotionally. I got taken down and I got pissed. And then I fought, you know, like just pissed off the whole fight, just trying to land bombs on the kid. Just I fought exactly the way I knew I wasn't supposed to fight. And like when I got done with that fight, I was like, I just pissed away such a huge opportunity. You know what I mean? Like I could be sitting where he's sitting right now, and I knew that. I knew that then, and like that was kind of. That was like a propeller for me. That fight really messed me up. I mean, getting choked out by Saeed sucked, you know what I mean? But it was like, it was a fluke. Everyone's like, it's, it's going to happen, you know what I mean? And it did. And, you know, but that, that, one, that one really ate me alive. And I'm like, I'm never going to walk out of that cage with that regret. Like, I don't care what I got to do. If I got to fucking die in there, I don't care, you know? But I'm not going to walk out of there being like, I had more to give. Out of all the ones, is that the, is that the loss, like you said, that weighs on you the most? Is that the one you want most back? Oh, oh absolutely. Absolutely. You can have all the other ones. I want him back, though. I know. I just know I can beat him. And you said you mentioned tonight. You know, you thought it was like a fight of a, a war of attrition. Do you like those kind of fights where you get a guy that's willing to give you that that fight of style? Fuck just... no, hell no, uh, no. Uh, I want him. I want to hit him, and I want him to fall down, and then I want to, you know, walk away with a bunch of money. Like, I mean, being in it in that second round, I was kind of getting into it. Like, that's right, motherfucker, let's go. And at the end of the fight, I was telling him, I was like, swing it out. I was like, put your feet on the ground, swing it out. Like, let's swing it out right here and figure it out. He obviously couldn't understand me because he kept yeah. kicking. <laughs> I was like, as it was happening, I'm thinking like, wow, he's still kicking. He doesn't, he doesn't know what I'm saying. Um, but no, I don't, you know, I don't ever want to be one of those guys that's like, man, that guy's got a fucking great chin. You know what I mean? Like, that's not who I want to be in this sport. I want to be somebody that hits and doesn't get hit. That's the fucking game. You know what I mean? It's not about how much damage you can take in a fight. Like, I don't... I don't want to be. I don't want to be one of those guys that that's known for being tough. Never. And then last, me looking for the rest of the year. You know, what's sort of the goals for the rest of the year that you're setting for yourself? Two more wins. I win two more fights. I mean, obviously, I would like it to be against you know guys that matter. You know, but ultimately, every motherfucker in the UFC is really good. So, you know, I'll fight anybody. And you know, there's some other there's some other things that I've been thinking about. These weight cuts are not getting any easier on me. You know what I mean? I've really kind of considered maybe not doing it anymore, not, not cutting to 35 anymore. It's just something I got to talk to my team about and, and, and figure out what I'm going to do. But, yeah, I had a moment Thursday night where I was like, I don't think I'm fucking doing this again. Just, you know, like I'm a big dude at 135, and I keep getting fucking bigger, and I cannot figure out why. It doesn't matter what kind of fucking diet I go on. I just keep getting thicker, and it just it's getting harder. So I don't know if I'm going to keep making 35 or if it's time to, to, to move up. Did you hit a hard spot where you, the weight just couldn't get No, up? honestly, that's the, the worst thing about it was is the weight came off great. And the whole weight cut was perfect. But it's just like once I'm at that weight, when I'm at 136 pounds, I feel fucking awful. I mean, like, I can barely move. 
you know what I mean? I'm dry heaving. I'm, I, I just, I'm uncomfortable. It's just, it's just a painful experience. You know what I mean? Like that weight cut is so fucking hard. I mean, it's like literally like after I cut weight, I'm like, I'm begging to fight. You know, it's like, it's the fight is fucking easy. Like, I don't care if the land fucking throws a hundred, you know, body kicks at me. I could give a shit less. Like, at least I get to, you know, eat, you know, like that weight cuts hard and fighting seems pretty easy. And I think that this would be a lot more fun as a sport if I could actually enjoy my life a little bit, not have to fucking diet for three months every time I got to make weight. So next fight might be a different division, huh? Yeah, we'll see. Congrats on the victory. Thank you. You've mentioned uh, Thursday being a, like a hard day for you. Can you allow, and, uh, explain, elaborate what exactly went for you uh, on Thursday? What happened? How did you feel? Did, was there any part uh, of you that considered <clears throat> like not fighting? It was just more of a mental thing, really. I mean, so I have an issue with airplanes. On airplanes on a long flight, I blow up. I don't know why. Uh, I, I, I'll be honest, I landed in, in Rio at 158 pounds. So I had to lose uh, 22 pounds. And I landed Sunday morning, so about, about five days. It's a lot of weight, you know. So by Thursday, I was not feeling fucking great. And it's just, it was just the, the thought about, like, I talked, uh, I talked to Gilbert Burns, actually, because, like, I was like... Hello. I just got done cutting weight and we we're hanging out at the rooftop pool and he was like, man, I used to do this shit, dude. And I'm telling you, once you stop doing it, it's like this, this, the whole fucking game is so much better. He's like, you'll actually enjoy this. You'll enjoy the sport. You'll enjoy it so much more. And I just thought about how much less miserable and how much better this sport would be if I didn't have to fucking put my body through that hell every single time I had to make weight. And he was like, I'm telling you, man. He's like, it's, just, it's not worth it. He's like, I thought if I went to 170, I would never be able to compete. And he's like, but... I'm doing better than I ever did, so, and he's like, and I'm not a big guy, and so I was like, so if, if I go up to 45, it's 100% Gilbert Burns' fault. <laughs> so going up to 45 and being healthier or fighting at 35 and getting a, uh, a fight against Mirab again? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll cut to 36 and fight Mirab again. <laughs> I just, I don't I gotta cut off one of my fucking legs or something, man. My legs just keep getting bigger. I, I Everyone's like, man, you got huge legs. I'm like, dude, that's not a good thing. Like, it sucks when I got to get on the scale. You know, I, I really, I just need to shrink a little bit, and it wouldn't be so bad, but it's just not happening. 